If your technician has told you that your AC has a leak, I wanted to tell you how we handle it here at Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Hey, if this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments section. This always sparks conversation as feelings about leaking systems from contractor to contractor vary quite a bit. The Environmental Protection Agency has updated the requirements related to ozone depleting and global warming substances like R22 and R410A refrigerant, which is very likely in the HVAC system at your house. However, after a recent schooling online and some back and forth, I found that we can't require you to fix the leak in residential applications that have less than 50 pounds of refrigerant, very much like your system. So we're not, and you're not, required to find or fix your leaking HVAC system. So technically, if you wanted to gas it up and let that refrigerant leak out over and over, apparently you're not forbidden to do that. But we at Fox Family have strong feelings about continuing to allow harsh chemicals that contribute to the degradation of our planet, namely the ozone layer and other side effects that are happening because of global warming. Plus, we want future generations of plants, animals, and humans to have a chance to enjoy their lives, breathe clean air, and thrive. Here's what happens when your AC system leaks, though. Large amounts of CFCs, HFCs, and HCFCs, which is what refrigerant is, are spewing into the atmosphere every day. Industrial and commercial buildings are the main culprit, but there are far more homes than commercial buildings existing. Regardless, leaking refrigerants mix with wind currents, air pressure, and updrafts that bring those chemicals into the lower atmosphere. No matter what people say about chlorine being heavier than air, it's been proven several times over that these chemicals are amply mixed with our lower and upper atmosphere where they linger. Rain doesn't knock them down either, as those chemicals rise even further through updrafts and pressure differences in the air, high energy solar radiation breaks those chemicals down, which releases the damaging chlorine. And those chlorine particles stay in the stratosphere for several years, where it eats away at the ozone layer. But back to your refrigerant leak. HVAC companies can and do continue to come out and refill your refrigerant as long as you need it. Because let's face it, you need to be comfortable. I get it. But at some point, a Fox Family technician is going to have a conversation with you about finding that leak and coming up with a plan to repair the leak or change out your system. It's just the right thing to do. So do we gas and go year after year? Well, maybe two or three times at your house is the limit for us. If you don't want to fix it, your love for the planet may not be in line with ours. HVAC companies make pretty good money by selling you refrigerant. It's really easy labor for us and not very time consuming either. That's why it's called gas and go. But refrigerant is expensive. If you have to keep refilling your refrigerant, which we don't know how often that will be, it can really add up quickly. If we've been to your home before, then we have a baseline from which to draw our information from. But if it's our first time out, I almost feel like it would be unfair to you to recommend that you start a leak search immediately. What if it's just a loose Schrader core at the service valve where the technicians hook up their gauges? I've seen this before. The system was way low on charge, and when I took the cap off the service valve, it was slowly shooting liquid refrigerant into the air. I tightened the core, and the system hasn't leaked out since. Or at least they haven't called me back yet. But it's a start. As an HVAC company, we're damned if we do and damned if we don't. If we say that you need a leak search the first time out, then people say we're being too pushy. If we don't and they leak out again, we're blamed for not recommending a leak search the first time we were out. And those people then want us to come back out and replace the leaked out refrigerant for free. Other times we come upon a 410 system that was made between 2008 and 2015, and it's leaking. It has copper coils, which we know did not mix well during that time of production. If it's an Aspen or ADP coil, I know exactly where to go every time to find that leak. It's in the evaporator coil near the furnace. 
All I have to do is pop the cover off and look low on the two slabs of the A-coil where I always find oil staining those coils or an oily feel to the bottom of the primary drain pan under the evaporator coil. Sometimes I can just look right into the P-trap and see the oily water right there in the PVC. Super easy. But you know your system's history better than us. Our customers have to help us out by letting us know if they've had another company come out and charge their system up. If you have a big leak, we could refill your refrigerant today and it be gone by tomorrow. Not being liable for your system's performance, most companies aren't going to refill that refrigerant for free just to get you up and going because they know it's just going to leak out again. Some companies will put some sort of leak stopper fluid into the lines. A lot like that green slime that they put in bicycle tires to find the leak and plug the hole from inside. Once again, about half of the HVAC guys out there will tell me that I'm wrong, but I won't put that stuff in your system because it can clog up the metering device at your evaporator coil and now I'm on the hook for your TXV not working right. A lot of manufacturers will agree with me when I say that nothing should be in your refrigerant lines besides virgin refrigerant. At the most, we'll insert some dye so that we can come back later and identify where the leak is. But that's only after we come out and use an electronic sniffer and visually check the system for leaks. So let's say that you've decided to find the leak so that we can figure out what to do next. Fox Family's leak searches come in three different stages. A stage one leak search includes an inspection of the condenser, evaporator coils, as well as the line set that runs in between for leaks with the use of vision, soap bubbles, and an electronic leak detection device. This search lasts for up to an hour of searching at this level of intensity. The price of the repair will be covered for the price of the stage one leak search. You'll be liable for your refrigerant refill one last time, but we always put the cost of the leak search towards the cost of your repair. If we can't find it that way, we go on to a stage two leak search, which requires us to add refrigerant dye to the system and come back out about a month later to allow the refrigerant to circulate through the system. The dye will spray out of the leak along with the refrigerant and oil, which creates a small spot where we will be able to visually locate the leak from there. The cost of this stage two leak search also goes towards the total cost of the repair of the leak. We almost always find it in this case. And for the people out there who say, well, I thought only virgin refrigerant was supposed to be in the lines. Well, it's always a good practice to recover any remaining refrigerant in the line set, put on a new filter dryer, and evacuate the system properly. No matter how small or where the leak was, the system surely lost some of its vacuum during this leak. So just pumping the system down and releasing the charge isn't really good practice in my opinion. If we still can't find the leak, a stage three leak search is available. It requires us to isolate the three portions of the refrigerant tubing from each other. We separate the outdoor coil, the indoor coil, and the line set that runs in between. Fox Family then brazes on a valve stem to these pieces of equipment. The technician then pressure tests each one individually to find out which one is actually leaking. This stage of the leak search is very costly and is very rarely ever used. It also takes a lot of time on the owner's part as well as the technician because we have to leave the system isolated for days at a time, which can be uncomfortable for someone in the middle of summer. So this is how we handle a leak search at Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Many companies handle it uniquely different, I'm sure, but some of my customers have asked me how we do it, so here it is. If you have any suggestions to this, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down below on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating, Air and Solar. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.